Hey, I'm a senior. My last year. Mr. Cannon doing great thing. He'll keep it up. You like it? I mean, put that in there for me. <laughs> we try to speak life into like dead situations. We try to offer like these micro affirmations to all of our kids and ensuring that there's a, a space that honors diversity. It's a space that that, that inspires hope. And to ensure that we're, we are that we have a school that um, that becomes like this nursery of hope, the school that's this incubator of hope. My definition of equity is like equity is the process of like how we ensure that every kid has access to to high quality education. Like student children growing up in poverty, they often experience life as like a series of these volatile uh, situations in which neither they nor their caregivers actually have any control. So equity, again, equity is the process and equality is the outcome. So what is fair and what is just in the process of educating students um, doesn't always reflect like strict, strict equality. There, so for an example, in a student school that I currently serve, in the county I currently serve, there's a huge disparity between like what a kid, what access to resources a kid may have in Chapel Hill, like Raleigh area, may have compared to like some of the deeper rural communities. Um, so I don't think the same resources should be mobilized to Raleigh Durham in the same way that they're mobilized here in the rural areas. The equity gap that exists here um, increase like the opportunity gaps that that increases the achievement gap, which widens like begins a result of the activity gap. So these things I think are all like interconnected and interwoven. It's about teaching plus like grassroots community work. And that's what the equity work is. And just to highlight a few of the like, strongholds, we have to find a way to address like the wealth disparity. We have to find a way to address like housing segregation, which which many of our students um, where they live kind of determine their, their futures, if we're honest about it. There is also a health factor concern with that that serves as one of those like violent like factors that are impeding students' lives. Another is the like exposure to stress that our kids experience and the exposure to violence which also like impedes like their their um, cognitive capacity and which which also becomes like a traumatizing experience and like there's tons of like brain brain research that um that, that shows like the the type the type of impact that that has on on student um, learning outcomes um so we seek to understand at my school um our teachers understand like we're doing equity work we serve a population of of over 70 percent 75 percent like you know black american students we have a large 18 percent 16 percent population of, of hispanic students so it's hard to do this work without talking about uh, talking about race and i think racism persists because it remains a taboo and we're so uncomfortable having the conversation and we know that like implicit bias like hidden stereotypes all like sh like shape our schematas and then shape sh also shapes the way we, we behave and interact um, so it's important to, to talk about it as if it's a real thing because, because like, again, like this becomes a barrier. If we don't honor the, the identity of kids, if we don't honor the experience of kids and the differences um, that they bring to the table, then leaves us in a, tough, in, a, in, a, in a tough space, you know? A number of our kids who are black and Hispanic live in high poverty areas. And at some point we, we have to, to look at the system. And many of my kids here know my story and leave my story. Um, I grew up in poverty. I grew up in housing, in, in housing projects. I grew up in a single parent household. I had to dig deep and like push and, 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 and push through and there were some amazing people along the way who inspired me and who touched my life and were able to usher me in the, in the down the right path. My yearbook said I wanted to be a, a history teacher and I wanted to be a coach. And I've done both of those things. Uh, and the reason being because I had a, an aspiring principal um, who, who helped me realize my full potential. A principal who helped me to, to reshape my, my reality. So I knew I wanted to become an educator because the transformative leader I had in my life was an educator. For me, it's like kids have a corresponding bias and through that, through the relationship building and through the bridging of our stories um, and similarities in our stories, uh, kids are able to trust me and allow me to serve as like the usher on that pathway. So many times we tell kids that you can be the doctor, the lawyer, you can be the principal, um, but especially for our kids of color, they, they're not able to see themselves in that role they're not able to look out and see people just like them. Um, and I think that's important to, to have, the, the kids are able to, you know, create that corresponding bias and say, well, if this person did it, I can do it. Instead of selling these like, really broad, like intangible goals to kids, uh, we actually want to put that in a, in a space where like it's actually really possible for kids. 
that we can um, kind of disrupt this nihilistic thinking where it's like, this is who I am, this is what I'm only gonna be by giving that kids a, a new reality. And one thing that I try and my staff try to inculcate here is to ensuring that all of our students are can do and they'll, they'll, they'll will try, they'll become like want more, like do more students uh, through it all. So I was able, as, as, a young, as a young guy growing up in poverty and growing up in public housing, I was able to chart, chart my own course, um, be willing to take like this big, broad risk. And so as a result of that, I want to give like young people the platform to, to do the same.